We set out to find a leader, someone who could take this franchise to the next level and build an elite team that consistently competes for championships. In Adam, I think we have the right leader. He's a winner. Uh, he's made an incredible impact everywhere he's been, starting obviously with uh, the New England Patriots, uh, on to the Denver Broncos where they won a Super Bowl, and then at the San Francisco 49ers. Together, we are committed to restoring this franchise to the highest levels. The man call somebody is back, call y'all. Somebody. We're back. back. Call He's your back. mama, call That's your daddy. We're back, and we're back. back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> Tony oh, McGee, y'all. We're back, y'all. We're back. Tony hey. McGee, y'all. Tony McGee, pro football plus. Tony McGee, pro football plus. Tony McGee, pro football plus. Tony McGee. Welcome to Tony McGee's Pro Football Plus. You may see me smiling now, not because the commanders got in the playoffs or anything, but because this is the last show of the year, 20 weeks gone by. And you know, before we start this show, I want to tell you fans, thank you. If it were not for you, we not would not be here. 39 years we've been doing this. But I tell you what, out of all the 39 years, you got four left this year. We can't count them. If you start looking at it, everybody said Frisco. They were going to do this and don't do that. We, they know they got a good team, but they may not stay well enough to beat a Detroit, who the last time they did something big, another one bit the dust. Now, a lot of you young people don't even know what I'm talking about there. And then you jump on the other side of the bar. I had the audacity to feel like Kansas City couldn't make it. But now everybody's saying the Ravens are great. This year, I don't know who's going to win it, but I tell you what, I'm going to bring in some eagle eyes, and they're going to tell me what. I got Anthony Armstrong, one of the – best wide receivers to ever play. Trey Johnson, no matter what you want to say, the boy ran a lot of people off the field. We got G-Man. He was brought there to keep everybody cool. That's how cold he is. Then I brought in the big Solomon, the treetop lover, my son. And he knows a little bit about football, a lot about basketball. But then I got Donna Hopkins, who told me how good she was in basketball. But looking at her picks this year, what can you do in football, Donna? But the one thing you want to talk about, you bought it. Not, not the playoff team, but Washington has a new guy that everybody thinks is going to make it a winner. Yeah, Tony. Um, uh, Adam Peters is the new general manager here with the Washington Commanders. And when you look at his resume, he's a winner. He's been a winner everywhere he's been, Tony. So right now, they're looking for the new head coach. They started bringing in some people the last week or so. The enemy has been interviewed. And some of the co coaches, Tony, that they want to hire is with some of the teams that are still in the playoffs, meaning the Baltimore Ravens and also the Detroit Lions. So they're having to wait through that process until they're able to interview. But right now, those coaches are Tony Ben Johnson and McDonald's and some of those guys. Uh, they're getting ready for the playoffs. So this commander's team has done it right, Tony, with the GM and now putting in place as far as the head coach. But, Tony, the, the these guys that they're looking at to hire as the head coach, they shouldn't be looking at the sexiest coach or the one that everybody is courting right now because that may not be the right guy for this commander's team. They've got to bring in a guy that is going to fit in this, fit for this team and also, Tony, to bring in those position coaches is just as important as the head coach once they hire that person as far as the offensive coordinator and the defensive coordinator. And you all know Trey, Gary, and Anthony, and all of you know how important those position coaches is because Coach Gibbs had uh, uh, Richie Patterbone and Joe Bugle, Tony. Well, you know, you look at that, and I'm going to ask Trey. They already got the coach, Trey, and they go on out, they got the GM. They got the number two pick. Trey, are there any linemen out there that's worth offensive linemen worth that second pick? Oh man, that's a tough one. I would say no. I would say trade the pick down, get a couple more first round picks, and then there are some linemen of some comparable value in that range. I think a lot. I think a couple of good guys will still be there, and you can get more for that number two pick. 
My man, did you hear that diamond? Did, should we have him repeat it or write? Maybe he should write it in crayon so you'll understand what they said. I understand what he said, Tony, but I'm still trading down. And I'm trading down, Tony, because I'm going to, that quarterback will still be there, one of them, but I'm getting some offensive linemen. So I like Trey and I like you, Tony, but I'm still not agreeing with neither one of you. Well, well Anthony R.G., is there any wide receivers out there? Now, you know, wide receivers have really changed the game this year and in the, the past few years. Are there any out there that's worthy of that second pick? A game breaker, one that'll come in, one that'll start from day one. Is there a receiver out there like that? Dude, Marvin Harrison Jr. is that guy. I mean, he is him. He is absolutely electric. He is, he is a big time playmaker. But the thing is, you don't need him in Washington. Tony, you don't need him in Washington. You already got a lot of players that are that are good. Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, and obviously Curtis Samuel. So you got wide receivers there. There's no need to, to go and get a receiver in Marvin Harrison Jr. Now talked about the offensive lineman. I think that's definitely a play. Maybe not at two, like Trey says, but it's it's always coming down to these quarterbacks. I mean, are you gonna pick a Caleb Williams or are you gonna try to pick a Drake May? Uh, I think there's a lot of homework to do. And the best part about it is I think that this front office, the way that they're being constructed, is that whatever they do is going to be a good decision, even even if it isn't a popular pick with the, the rest of the fans. And, you know, G, you take a look at that, and if they come by trading down and stuff, the one thing, they have a plethora of right receivers, very good players. Do you trade one of those? Do you try to trade down? or Do you think there's an opportunity for them to move one of those receivers? No, I mean, I think you keep – they got a great receiving core. Why, why mess around? I think that the three strong – the four strong, quite honestly. They got four good receivers. Why mess with the receiving core? For me, I, I'm just not a big fan of the draft in general. I know we all got drafted. We all have picks, you know. It's fortunate you know, to be a pretty high pick and getting drafted. But you don't know what you're going to get out of college. You just don't. You know, you can be a great college player, but you can be a great college player and be shit in pros. You know, so what I want to do, if anything, I would take my draft picks and find veterans and train them for veterans. I want veterans that I know what they can do against the tough, the best players in, in the NFL. I don't want to take a guess. I'm not college players, you're only taking a guess. I don't, I don't know how good you really are. You know, that's why you see um, a number eight pick come into the league and be better than a number one pick. You just never know what you'll get out of college. You just don't. It's a different game. It's a different sport. Well, you, you know what, Donald? Let's look at the business at hand. Out of the four teams left, what do you feel for them? Now, we went into these games over the weekend thinking that, okay, the Ravens, we knew that they, everyone said they're the best team. San Francisco is number two. They struggled somewhat. Detroit fooled everybody. And then you got Kansas City, who you can never count out. Give me your thoughts on them. Yeah, Tony, you know what? It was great playoff games. Everybody was looking at the Detroit Lions thinking that they were going to be one and done, and they're just proving week in and week out that this is a team to watch. I mean, they're going to be dangerous against the San Francisco 49ers because you look at San Francisco right now, Debo Samuels hurt his shoulder, not sure if he's going to play, and he is key for them, Tony. He left in the first quarter and didn't return. So you go on down the line as far as the Baltimore Ravens. This is the team to beat, Tony. I mean, they're clicking on all cylinders. And then the Kansas City Chiefs, Tony, who I told you that would beat Buffalo once again. Patrick Mahomes proved in and out that he knows how to rally that team. And also Andy Reid as the coach. And, you know, it could have went either way. But when it was all said and stirred all together with the Kansas City Chiefs, um, so it's going to be a good weekend of football, Tony, and it could go either way. The Ravens, to me, is the only dominant team that you have question. I mean, that you don't have any question marks on both sides of the ball. But you can't never, as Gary always say, uh, count out Patch McCones and the Kansas City Chiefs. No, you're about right there. And I'm going to give a rhetorical question to you, Trey. What's the best offensive line in the playoffs? And I'll tell you who's going to win the Super Bowl. Which line do you feel is the best? Mm, um, I would say, I would say that um, I gotta go with Detroit. I would mm. say Detroit. Um, in, in terms of consistency, they're able to run the ball. Um, I'm not gonna say they have the best. I like Pele. I'm gonna go Detroit. I think Detroit got the best O line out of these four teams. Big go. 
you watch it and you know I watch it because we talk during the games and everything. Did you see anything in particular that we can look for this weekend to give any kid an uh, edge? And what I'm talking about is you saw Kansas City when they started to falter, they went right back to their quarterback. They're always going to do that. You saw that, that when San Francisco got in trouble, what they did, they go to running back, go back up over big Williams on that side. Now, when you got Detroit, it seemed like everything they have to do, it have to be a team-wise. So if that's going to be a great approach or what? And then if you look at the Ravens, I'm just so afraid that everybody's touting them to be so good that they may fall apart in the playoffs. And we know if the quarterback get hurt, they'll fall apart. What do you see, big fella? Well, first of all, this is what I see with the Ravens, just like a good crab cake. I feel like they're going to stay together. <laughs> they stay together this long. And they cooking more than crab cakes up there right now. The Detroit Lions, what up though? Just want to say what up to my three one three seven three four. They got they play with a lot of heart. They don't they never quitters. They never quit. But the thing I'm scared about that my father said about them during the year, they don't know how to stop people, so they give up as many points as they score. San Francisco is really going to be on health if they can stay healthy without a Debo Samuel's playing. They may have a shot. And I'm getting like um, Gary was with as far as with Mahomes. I don't want to bet against him because I picked the Bills in that game also. But the kid, he's getting like he's getting like Brady. You really don't want to bet against him. So I really feel like these four games is going to be some clutch, clutch games, and I think we're going to enjoy the playoffs. Anthony, who's the most dominant receiver in these playoffs? Man, right now it's. You almost look on, on just about any team. I mean, right now, Amon Ross St. Brown is, is absolutely carrying the Detroit Lions in the passing game. He's able to get open on third down with option routes and gives Jared Goff a, a really solid you know person to go to. Uh, you, you can't really pick anybody over there in Kansas City because I don't think they're they're consistent enough. I mean, Marquez Valdez, Scanton, Scantling, he played a great game against the Bills, but he's also known to have those drops. So you got to see which one is going to show up for, for Kansas City. Uh, but then when you go out there to to San Francisco, you talked about Debo Samuel, uh, Donna. The guy is injured. He does spend a lot more time carrying the football. Uh, he's a more physical player, but – Right receiver wise, I gotta give my favorite out there to Amos Ross St. Brown. He's the guy that's carrying things for Detroit. He's the dominant receiver for you. Oh, Are you doing, Anthony, Anthony, you didn't even talk about the Baltimore Ravens because when you look at the Baltimore Ravens, they got Zay Flowers, is the, the rookie that has really played well. You yes. got Odell, Odell Beckham. A junior that that had one catch in that game against the Texans, but he's really played well. Him and Lamar Jackson has really clicked this year. And also you've got Likely and Bateman. So when you look at that huge receiving core for the Baltimore Ravens, I didn't even hear you, Anthony, mention any of those names. Yeah, but they got they got a guy by the name of Lamar Jackson though. Lamar is is above and beyond the best player in the in the world right now. Okay, I mean you mentioned OBJ. You would never think that you would be satisfied with OBJ having one catch. Zay Flowers has been absolutely electric. He's a dangerous, dangerous player. But Amon Ross St. Brown is by far and away the best receiver for the Lions. Sam Laporta is a rookie tight end who's doing a good job, but. Amon Ra helps keep that keep that offense going. They stay on the field uh, on third downs, and they're able to extend those drives, and, and it works out in their favor because uh, Detroit runs the ball and controls that clock, and Jared Goff is a perfect guy for it. I tell you, you know, the key to me in this whole thing is you, you got each team that has a flaw. If you look at all the flaws, San Francisco seems to be the team with the least amount. The Ravens come next because we know if the quarterback's hurt. But I don't know about this, Donna, and I, I don't want to ask any of the other guys, but after they did the uh, warm-up and they, they made the announcement of who starts, I didn't hear Chase's name much in that, that game. Did you hear his name a lot? Hey, Tony, why are you picking on Chase Young? I'm just calling it like I see it. This is like the World Series now. You got to call, call him out at third base if they didn't touch the bag. Come on. Hey, hey Tony, you know what? The way that they were uh, running through the Green Bay Packers was running through that defensive line, you probably didn't hear many names on that defensive front from the San Francisco 49er. Not only Trey, but both are all, and all of that front because they were dominant. Don't be trying to put Trey in that. He didn't play for them. 
Hey, I'm talking about I mean? Osa. I said, I, I said, the, yeah, the, you so busy jumping. Let's go ahead. The line of the San Francisco 49ers, Tony, was getting pushed around because they were running through there like it was nobody uh, in space and everything. But, hey, Gary, you know what? Like Tony said, with San Francisco, Chase Young, the key thing is, Tony, Chase is in the playoffs. Yeah. Well, yeah, but is he, is he in the playoffs because of him? Or is he in the playoffs because of us? And when I say us, I'm talking about the people that traded him. So when we come back, we'll answer that question. But I'm still, what's his last name? Uh, oh, we'll be back in a minute. Now, I know you fans are hearing our people talking in the background and everything, but we are waiting for breaking news. We got something we may hear before the end of the show. But until then, Donna, okay, you didn't win the picks. You didn't win the basketball game. You can't shoot. I mean, give me something up. What Can you pick a team? Tell me what's going on. I don't have to win the picks, and I don't have to win basketball games all the Who time. Who won the picks, Donna? It was, uh, you know what, my mouth will not uh, <laughs> reveal that this year because I'll never hear the end of this because that person finally got back in the, the winning columns because he's been on a drought for the last three years, Tony. But, but let's go back to the Detroit Lions, Tony, because, you know, when you look at this team and, and the coaching staff, I mean, they've got solid coaching from the offensive coordinator, uh, Ben Johnson, to the defensive coordinator and the head coach in general. He likes to take chances. But Detroit also has a good running game. And when you look across the board, Tony, and everybody can talk about the running games for each team that's still in the playoffs, the Detroit Lions, they ran the ball well. I, I mean, they started a little slow, but as the coach said that, Hey, you can't look past anybody, the Bucks or anybody, because this is the playoffs and everybody that's in the playoffs is a good team. You look at San Francisco with McCaffrey, with that, you know, with what he can do for that team is a must. And then you look at San Francisco, San Francisco, you look at uh, the Ravens, you, you look at all the teams, the Kansas City, all the teams in the playoffs right now, Tony, have solid running games. How effective is that for each team? headed into the championship weekend, uh, who can run the ball and who can stop the run because the teams in the playoffs, Tony, un unlike the, the Ravens, they're the only ones that stop in any team. They come in with the number one defense in the NFL, but the running game, as you well say, Tony, is so important in the playoffs. And, you know, I look at Detroit, really, and that's one thing they have that we were not aware of when we went into these playoffs. They got an excellent running game, and then you take a look at San Francisco somewhat. But at the same time, Trey, which one of those two do you think has the best running game? Because that may be the decisive factor of this whole thing. And if McCaffrey doesn't get hurt, to me, and I, I, I didn't think I'd ever say this, but he could be the best all-around offensive player in the league. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I'm gonna still go with Lamar Jackson on that, but um, yeah, I, I got you. I, I definitely think that um, he's a dangerous cat. I think he led what he led led the league in rushing and yards per carry and yards per game or some such thing. Um, but I got you. Know, I'm, I'm gonna give hats off to to Detroit as far as from a team standpoint. Like they got two guys up in there that pick them up and put them down. You know, like they are they running that ball and they're a lot more durable to me than some of these high line teams like the 49ers and such. Um, I'm always I'm going to give the nod. I think uh, Lamar Jackson and the Ravens can always take the over to the Russian type just because they got Lamar. I'm a huge fan. But I definitely think, you know, I, I got much respect for Detroit. And you know, hey, Trey, and Lamar Jackson did have 11 carries for 100 yards. He was the leading rusher for the, the Ravens in that game. So beyond the other running backs. 
Yeah, I may have to go with you on that one. I, I misspoke on that one. Lamar Jackson is the man on that. But if you take a look around, and which is the best wide receivers out there? G, you and Armstrong got to tell me that because it seems like you look at these two teams, Kansas City got the fastest team other out there now other than since Miami is gone. But you look at the same thing, all the receivers seem to be fast in this league. Now, is that a new thing now that receivers have to run 4-2? I remember we had guys that were outstanding receivers that ran 4-4 four, four and 4-5. Four, now they come out 4-2-3 and 4-2-1 and all that. Which one of these teams had the best and the fastest receivers? I'll let, I'll let Anthony answer that. He probably, he, probably <laughs> know, he, he probably knows better than me, quite honestly. Man, you, 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 you're so kind, Gary. I appreciate it. Look, you talk about those wideouts. I already talked about Detroit. I'm on Ross A. Brown. Dude's talented. He's really good. Uh, but overall, as a receiving core, if Debo Samuel gets back, um, I want to give it to San Francisco. Uh, I'll give it to them. Now you, I know Donna's over there like, now nah, you're going to lead the Ravens out of it. Now I get it. Um, it's A lot of that is predicated on Lamar Jackson. He's got all those weapons, but he still only threw for 130-some-odd yards. He still mm. gets a lot of his action on, on his feet. San Francisco works all the way across the board. Brandon Ayuk outside on one side. If Debo Samuel's back, he's going to be on the other side. And, the, and the, the key is that these guys line up everywhere. And do they have to be fast? They have to be pretty fast. But these coaches put them in great position to be successful at what they do the best. I mean, Debo Samuel needs the ball in his hands quickly. And Kyle Shanahan delivers that to him. And if you look at this entire offense with Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, it's the most pound for pound, most all around offensive group you're going to get because there's so much variety that you can put them in that they're going to be able to be successful. So to me, it's got to be San Francisco just for their versatility and the amount of variety they can attack you with. You know, what, Tom, when you look at this team and you look at the, the coaches and we got one a young coach, they say he's fiery and he is and he, he doesn't mind going for it on fourth and 20. Then you got three coaches that's been there before. Which one of the coaches you think is the top dog in this and it'd be important to their team? Whatever coach still holds accountability, even with um, this being the playoffs. And that's one thing I'm looking at with all four coaches left, including Dan Campbell, Andy, the young uh, Shanahan, Shanahan, and um, who am I? Uh, Harbaugh, uh, Harbaugh. They all hold their players still accountable, whether they win or losing. And I really feel that Dan Campbell, just for some reason right now, he goes into halftime and makes pure adjustments. Like, and you see the difference when he comes out. That's the scariest game to me, just because, kind of like um, Green Bay did with the Cowboys. I think. They're gonna run the um. They're gonna run the ball so much, they're gonna actually take away the uh, front four where the linebackers are gonna have to eat. We're really gonna get to see what the line. Which they do got a good linebacker core with Greenleaf, but we're really gonna get to see because they the Lions got two running backs that definitely run like beast mode. But I definitely feel that um, right now I'm just leaning towards the Lions being that one that's going to have to face the Ravens because I just I just got a bad feeling about San Francisco right now. You know what, Donnie? Everybody Tony, does. Tony, wait a minute. And staying right there uh, with uh, the 49ers, when you look at that Green Bay game, back at that Green Bay game against mm -hmm. the 49ers, Green Bay gave them all kind of fits. If they don't turn over the ball those few times, they possibly don't win that game. San Francisco was behind in that game for, for the most part until the last six minutes when they rallied because uh, they gave Brock Purdy a lot of pressure. They, they created some habit right there. Why was Green Bay so successful on, uh, on uh, the 49ers, and what kind of problem is that going to cause for them? Well, you know what, Green Bay, and a lot of people talk about it a lot, but at the same time, they take their quarterbacks and they – they have the replacement there before the actual star leaves. And I think that's been very good for them. And that's what has happened with this young man. He's been there two or three years. He knows the game. He's picked up some good habits from the prior quarterback there. And that's why I think they are playing a lot better than people thought. What was really surprising about them is their running game as well. But they went and got some people at the end of the year that's helping them with that. I think now that everybody went into this, and I told you guys 10 weeks ago, I thought the Ravens that would be in the Super Bowl as Frisco. I've kind of changed that now. I saw a Detroit team that never gives up. 
They play hard. They're not the best talent, but they just like the city. They're hard workers. And you know what? I told y'all I'm from Battle Creek, Michigan. We don't mess around. So you did, and you take a look at them. But then I look at San Francisco, and to me this time, and this is just me saying, they look more Hollywood. They look like they expected to do stuff. They did okay. But then when they got behind, they were able to come back. So when you look at this, it's just a toss-up to me for who will win this game. And that's why I asked you guys about specific positions because I feel if you can run the ball and run it consistently, you can beat anybody. But if you got game breakers, you can always come from behind. You take a look at that Buffalo team. Yes, I did go for them. But one thing we found out about them – they can't, they can't turn it on when they really, really need to. Now, their quarterback can, but then when he gets desperate, he starts taking chances. You look at Kansas City, and I hate to say this, Donnie, you may be right. They may be, they may be on the verge of winning another championship. Don't get quiet on me, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> I guess she ain't going to say that to me. So if you guys look at that – which one do you think? And I just can't get in there. You said we all talk about each team. Each one of you give me the team you think is going to win. Yeah, I, I think Donna got got locked up over there uh, from from you apologizing to us. So now it's not even – she didn't even witness this, Tony. She she can't even get the benefit <laughs> from you saying you were wrong on something. Uh, I, when I look at it, you talk about those running games. Detroit has been up against the very talented Rams – offense with Kyron Williams, who runs the ball really well. He shut those guys down. They're only giving up 78 yards per game on the ground, where San Francisco's giving up 136. So, you know, Trey said Detroit had the best def- uh, offensive line. You got to think, hey, they're going to be able to move the ball against San Francisco. Now, are they going to, you know, try to attack similar the way to Green Bay did? I, I think so, you know. Uh, but, you know, when you talk about offensive line, you can't go without mentioning Trent Williams. Um, I think he's going to bring in the, the intensity and the swagger uh, that San Francisco needs because he knows it's going to be a, a fist fight. It's going to be a physical matchup. So for me, I, I think San Francisco is going to win that game, but it's not going to be easy. It's, it's going to be some uh, bruises going on in that football game. Well, you know, guys, let's take a break because, see, if we don't take a break, Donna's going to come back and say, y'all didn't get me on. Y'all talked about me. So we'll take a quick break right now and see can we get Donna back on. We'll be back in a moment. All right, we back and we got Donna Hawkins back. Donna, people were talking about you. They said they don't know if you know this or that. And I think you just perfectly got off of the mic at the right time. You had to answer the question. So we coming right back to you and asked us, what team do you think the best out there and why? Hey, Tony, I keep saying that the Baltimore Ravens has to be the best team uh, in the playoffs going in right now. Because when you look at them on both sides of the ball, offense and defense, they are clicking on all cylinders. I, I, I mean, going into the playoffs, you all talked about the hot team. Well, they're the hot team right now. Lamar Jackson is the hottest quarterback right now, Tony. He can run the ball. And everybody questioned him. Can he pass the ball? Well, he's proven that he's a passer also. And he has different ways that they can beat you. But it's the defense, Tony. You got to talk about the Ravens' defense because their defense didn't miss a beat. They took two weeks off didn't start their starters going into the playoffs. A little slow coming out on offense in that game, but their defense came out, Tony, and they didn't miss a beat as far as the dominant defense that they are. Number one defense in shutting down people, Tony. So I got to pick the Ravens. I mean, even though I like Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs, they got their work cut out, cut out this week. You just picked it for me. If you want the Ravens, I'm going with Kansas City. Hey, hey G. Be wrong. <laughs> G, let me ask you this. Can Beckham be the difference? Now, you know him. He's been around a while. People say he's through. He's a showboat. But it looks as if wherever team he goes to, no matter what, he shows up and he does something good for him. 
They got a plethora of young receivers right now that are really fast, really good. And see, he seems to be the glue to that whole receiving core. And I know we talk about good the quarterback is, but without that core, they, he's not the same quarterback. Yeah, I mean, he's he is. I mean, he's a great athlete. I mean, he, <laughs> he's he's just a guy that you know every defense has to fear. And but in terms of the receiving core, I think I think Beckham is a solid receiver. I really do. I mean, I think. Um, you know, if he has opportunity to make a play, he makes a play. You know, I don't know if he's your top 20, but he's definitely a solid receiver that makes a play when the play has an opportunity to come his way. Um, again, that's a game I just – I don't know. Like, I don't I don't, I don't, don't bet against that guy in Kansas City. I just – this is just a game I wouldn't touch. I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. I don't know who's going to win. But uh, I never count Kansas City out, especially when people start to doubt – that guy. That's when he plays his best. When you doubt him, that's when he all of a sudden he comes alive and he becomes this other player. And it always happens around the playoff time. Just just what it is. So I ain't doubting him. I'm just gonna be quiet. <laughs> but Trey, who's the best? Now, if you, I know you're looking at when you're looking at the offensive line, you're looking at the defensive line as well. Who's the best defensive lineman out there and which team are they on? Now, I know people are gonna say San Francisco, but we didn't, we don't know a lot about the Ravens except we know they're good. We know Kansas City got the big guy in the middle that when he wasn't there, they had a big problem. So, but Detroit, you got the young man they got from Michigan a couple of years ago. He had nine and a half sacks his first year. He had 10 this year, or seven this year, seven and a half his first year, nine this year. So he's really coming on. Who is the dominant defensive lineman in this game, which could change the game? The single most dominant D lineman is Chris Jones. When Chris Jones wanted, you know, his motor, I question a little bit in terms of consistency, but when he wanted to shut something down, he shut it down. Nobody can block him. As far as D line as a unit, as a whole, I'm going with the Ravens. And only and, and not only because of the guys I got up front that are stout, play great gap control, and the guys can get up the field, but then those two linebackers in their front seven can fly. Now, that's when you start shutting down guys like, not shutting down, but comparable uh, coverage on guys like Kelsey in the middle, you know, um, can hopefully contain that wild boy uh, Pacheco for winning that ball. But D-line-wise, the one guy, Chris Jones, the, the unit is uh, Baltimore. And even though San Fran is all pretty in Hollywood and all, you know, uh, tight uniforms and arms blaring and all of that, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to go with Baltimore. You saw that too. I, it, it looked like they went Hollywood on this big zone. What happened to them? That's our boys. Know. We've been with them all year. We thought they'd get chased. It was going to be different. They went Hollywood on us. Yeah, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, Chase didn't have that much gold in his hair until he moved out there. Now his whole scout, he looks like he looks like my man from Lion King now. He got so much gold in his hair. But no, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm agreeing with, um, with, with Trey Pound. I got to go with the Ravens just because far as them having a first line that you got to get past, then you got to get past them linebackers that they let roam like two bull masters at night. Oh, that's a, that's something to watch. And then let's let's not sleep on Jadavian Clowney, the, re the reawakening of Jadavian Clowney in um, the Ravens land. He's actually putting pressure and doing things. They're lining them up on the end. They put them at linebacker. So I'm like Trey Pound. I really, really like the Ravens, what they're presenting right now. And I do. That's what scares me about San Francisco. I don't know what San Francisco we're gonna get. So I'm just gonna. I'm still sticking with. I'm looking at a Ravens and a possible Lions Super Bowl. Clowney got that that million dollars down the other day for nine and a half sacks. Now when I was playing, if you didn't get double digits, you were just one of the guys. Hey, 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 Tony. But let's go back a little bit as far as what you were talking about the Ravens, because I want to kind of like tap on on you. So when you look at this this Chiefs team, and they've been there, Tony, they won, I think, uh, four, three or four out of the last championship game. So so they know, you know, what it's about. They know what to bring in that game against the Ravens. They don't care about everybody is, is talking about the Ravens, and they're basically saying that Kansas City may not have a chance. But how can the Kansas City Chiefs slow down the Ravens? Because the Kansas City Chiefs, have, they've got a pretty good offensive line. They protect Patrick Mahomes, and that offense of the Kansas City Chiefs has been number one as far as scoring this year. But do you give them a chance of possibly beating the Ravens, or is the Ravens just that good 
that their defense is going to cause Patrick Mahomes problems. How do you see this playing out for Kansas City? I look at Kansas City to do okay if they stop dropping balls. See, they've dropped balls in key situations where in prior years they held on to those balls. They got to get back to playing regular ball. They can't, and I like what they're doing, that they don't depend on the quarterback doing the whole game. But everyone know in the fourth quarter when the money's on the table, he's going to be the one making the bet. And when he does that, he makes outstanding plays. Now, what is a nap? What, what kind of? It don't make you afraid, but you're looking for it. Sooner or later, people are going to figure it out. And he makes a lot of them with hard runs or throwing back over his body or looking the other way and throwing. That's only going to work so long. But he's always the guy at the end of the game. You got to worry about him. So when I look at Kansas City, I had given up on them, but they showed me one thing. And the one thing about that, the games weren't great games. But what we saw in the playoffs with every team, and you got to go back and, and give Todd Bowles because his team played well too. These were playoff teams. We weren't talking about the number of mistakes. We said, okay, if they get an injury, maybe that, that'll that hurt them. We're talking about these teams deserve to be there. And that's why you look at each one. And if you look at the same thing on this show, we've gone and G over and over. And I know you you gave Beckham a little bit of play and everything, but it just seems like, and you've been saying it each and every year, G, this is more than one thing. We know whoever run the ball the best can win, but we also know that receivers can take it up. You tell me if Brown had to been there for Philadelphia, they wouldn't have been there. So I look at the receivers, and we got some of the most talented receivers in this game, these next two games that are coming up. Yeah, I mean it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to watch. I mean, it's gonna be fun to sit back and watch all the games, you know, because this is any given Sunday. It truly is, and we don't know who's gonna win, quite honestly, because it's the team that shows up and it's who who embraces it. Like the guys that embrace it, they want to be there. They're will they're gonna will their way to win. And for the most part, that's the only reason why I don't really go against the guy from Kansas City because he tends to want to will himself in two games. And, you know, and now in the playoffs, I think the Ravens is the best team in football right now. I really do. But I'm still not going to bet bet on them to beat Kansas City. I don't know Kansas City is going to beat them either, but I'm not going to bet against Kansas City losing just because of that guy and what the type of impact he has on his players. Like, I mean, he's, he's the type of guy I would have I would have liked to play with. Like, I, I want guys that – believe that they can will themselves to do something when somebody else believes that they can. And um, I'm, I'm know, a big fan of those guys that do that. Like, they will their way. Like, you know, the, the guy that gets hurt and he still plays. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, he wills his way. I mean, you know, I mean, those are the type of guys that I go into battle with. Those are the type of guys that I'd love to play with. Those are the type of guys that I did play with. You know, that no matter what, they found a way to put it together to come up with a victory. Those are the type of guys I like to play with. Those are the type of guys that I think win Super Bowl. And don't get me wrong, I think, you know, for all I know, Baltimore may just blow them out of the park. But I'm still not going to bet against a guy that puts it on the line every time, no matter if he's hurt or not. He puts it on the line 100%. So who's the best tight end in the game? I want to ask you a question before we move on. We've talked about the players and everything uh, across the board. But one thing we haven't talked about is coaching. Who has the coaching edge in these games? You look at Detroit going against uh, uh, Cal Shanahan. Uh, You look at Harbaugh going against Andy Reeves. I'd like to hear from each of you all, Tony, as far as when you look at each team, and we know it's going to come down to coaching also, who has the edge coach-wise, Tony, starting with you? Well, if you take a look at it, I always give Reed's edge, but you have to take a little bit away because the enemy is here now. I've seen some things where he's pulled the game out. So I'm jumping a little bit more now thinking that Harper, who's been there before, he knows how to win. He knows how to put a team together. And one thing, he always starts his team with a good, great defense. Look at the years. Even the year they won the Super Bowl, it was all about defense. So I give Harbaugh that. You look on the other side of the ball, you you have your talk. Shanahan has been there a long time. He's with his father out in Denver. Then he came there, and they they messed over uh, people in, in Washington, and it got people hurt. And that's just my opinion. But he's one thing he's shown. Shanahan is the kind of coach, if he can have a running game, which his father was famous for that, and he as well, they can win games. 
So when I look at him up there, I got to give him the edge. But I look at this young coach in Detroit, Campbell. Everybody's talking about him. You know why? He plays football. He don't play position. He don't play edges. He don't play the, the, the what's the best here. If he wants it on fourth and 10, he's going after it. If he want to stop you and take a chance, he's going to do it. He's a team that you can see. He's a guy. He's like a teammate that's running the team. So it's kind of a toss up there. I have to give the other coach that Reeves always, well, I, I can't say who's the best out of all the coaches, but I tell you what, you got your four best coaches in there right now. Hey, hey Solomon, what's your take on the coaching? Who has the edge? I mean, right now you got, I'm leaning towards the Dan Campbell and the Harbaugh just because I, I know what the two uh, other guys present. Andy Reid, as good as he's a coach, he's still kind of soft-spoken. And I want to say I've seen Dan Campbell get in people's face. I've even seen Harbaugh get in people's face. So I got a – and um, Shanahan, I still like that. So I still got bad blood with him with what he did with <clears throat> number 10 here, one of the best quarterbacks. <laughs> but anyway, we'll talk about it another day. So – I'm leaning towards Dan Campbell because, as my father remembers, I had a coach like Dan Campbell at my prep school. He was fiery. He was he just got in the player's face, but he got some of the best ball out of us that we ever played, and all of us walked away with Division One scholarships through that prep school. Where we had the next coach that came in, he was mild mannered. He, you know, everything we would we wouldn't do good on play. He would be like, "It's going to be all right." He wouldn't really get in the face, and we saw our team decline after uh, during that. So I want to go with the strong coach. I like Dan Campbell. It's like Dad said, he, it's a player playing. So he's going to get in your face just like he's lined up next to you and you let him down. So I got to go with uh, Dan Campbell as far as the coaches left. I tell you and what, Tony, you, you got to take – Tony, and, and tell we, you got to take a break so that we can come back and hear from uh, Gary and Trey. All right. Well, we'll take a break on that. And I'm tell you what. That young man know what he's talking about. Cause I thought he could have been the best six foot seven tight end in the NFL, but he dunked over everybody, so he played basketball. That's another one of them stories, Big Zo. We'll be back in a moment. Again, this workout that we're about to do, that I'm about to do, not even do, I'm about to show you guys, it's, uh, it only takes 30 minutes, uh, 40, 20, twice, 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off, 40 seconds on, and then you move to the next station. So when you finish that first exercise, you got 20 seconds to get to the next exercise. Not a minute like I just showed you, it's 20 seconds. Get the arms tight to the body, and then, Squeeze your arms tight to the body. So there's no space. Damn. Mother, father. Woo! Now, again, that's a, do two sets there. Back on the treadmill. Which I ain't gonna do. I just went to the next exercise. But imagine me on the treadmill. That'd be cool. I had doctors coming up next. He's a long time. Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. Woo! Oh, my God. So here I'm going to do, if I'm doing leg extension, I'm going to do one leg, 40 seconds, and the other. And this is my bad leg right here. My meniscus. I'm starting to have trouble with that again. The last thing we're going to do for weights, down here. Squeeze. Squeeze. And that's it. That's the workout. Heart rate 145, not bad. Got it up to 169. But it come down, it came down fast, and that's the key. If your heart rate comes down quick after you're working out, 
you're in good shape. If that sucker takes five minutes, then he gets you to the hospital. Mm. Yeah, hey, it's been a great year. The whole time working with Donna, getting her in shape, keeping myself in shape. Because normally I wouldn't do this. I just go take my clients through her most of the time. But to go out and do this in front of you guys is it's a great joy for me. And um, I'm looking for next year, man. I can't wait for we got bigger, better things for next year for you guys. Well, another great year with Ricky Irvin giving us all the fitness tips. He got us going, Tony, just like these playoff teams got us going right now. And, you know, Tony, again, you want to hear from uh, Gary and Trey about the coaching situation. You know what I do, Coach? You know, you guys got a lot of knowledge. And, you know, one thing I know, G, when you was here, I know that you you was one person that could challenge Coach Gibbs in the way that can be challenged. Do you think it needs to be a player like that on one of these teams that can make a difference? And if so, which coach do you think is the best coach out there right now? Well, I think, you know, coaches who understand their players and appreciate their players and know that if a player is only trying to win or not trying to do something for, for selfish reasons or trying to win football games, so they listen to those players like Coach Gibbs did, I like that. I mean, but for – I mean, for me, it's simple. I'm like, you just, you just count rings. I mean, <laughs> you know – he, he's, he's kind of more like Joe is, you know, Reed, when you talk, he's more kind of like Joe, you know, at the end of the day, you see him every year and he's back in the hunt, you know, either looking to plan for a Super Bowl, winning a Super Bowl or in a championship game or in the playoffs trying to get a Super Bowl. So I'm going against that mild mentor guy in Kansas City, but he tends to always be in your face come, you know, January. There Just, you go. What, <laughs> you Big Trey, come on, man. Bring it home. All right. So as far as like types of coaches, best coaches, I think Andy Reid and then maybe a little bit below uh, Kyle Shanahan are the best clipboard coaches in the league right now. They can mm -hmm. draw up anything to get you out of any situation. Their consistency in terms of being able to adjust, to adapt and overcome at halftime intervals within the game, bar none. You know, everybody want to holler at the enemy. I still, you know, Reid is that dude. Like Gary said, he's there every year. But I will also say, as far as them gully coaches go, Harbaugh. Harbaugh took a chance on Lamar Jackson, created an entire team around him in a flavor that nobody was doing at that time. And he, he made history. Like, nobody was going for mobile quarterbacks like that and able to compliment him to the point where he's at this two-time MVP level. And his defense is like that. I mean, I think people sleep on guys like Humphrey and that safety Hamilton from Notre Dame. They're building good teams. I would say that um, Andy Reid is like like Gary say got the ring. He's sitting there looking like Mr. T on the football field, but um, <laughs> I, I also got to give that love to uh, Harbaugh. Yeah, I kind of agree, and you know that was a tough question if you want to think about it. And we were all trying to be fair, but if you look at it, all of them had some credibility, and all of them have some history, and that's what I like. And if, you know, if you look at this show, what we're trying to do. Each position. So you guys, when you go into these games, look at that offensive line. Sometimes rather than looking at receivers, look at that offensive defensive line. Sometimes that's where the game is won or lost. When you get in games like this, it takes about hard. It takes about not who's been the best. It's about who's going to be the best right there. And with that being said, as I told y'all, we're in our 39th year, and I'm going to make a mention of this because we want you to follow us. Go to our website, redmagplus.com. Leave us some ideas what you'd like to see next year. We're going for 40. That's how old I'll be when we do that. Well, and you look at my son. I was only about one or two when I had him. But as we get back to this, if we get back to this, I think that this is going to be a very interesting football playoff. But at the same time, I don't think the teams that we think, and I'm talking about Kansas City and and San Francisco. I don't know if those are the ones that we got to worry about. The Ravens, yes, we know that, but injuries always can hit them. And Detroit, for some reason, is staying in the back of my mind that Detroit, the way they run it, the way they're tough, the way they come back. And I just, it's something about them. And I don't know if everybody else feel that way, but one thing about it, when we look at this and we did not see these things with the commanders this year. So when we're looking for coaches and looking for different things, Donna, don't you think we should look at grabbing some of these type coaches like they got out there right now, either get one of the better older ones or one of the better new ones? What are you looking for when they're looking for their coach? What would you look for? Hey, you know what, Tony, when you look at the formula, uh, how these teams in the playoffs have put their teams together, I mean, 
Baltimore is a great example because Ozzie Newsom, the Ozzie Newsom left that team in great shape with the with the the, one, the guy that preceded him. Uh, I mean, they built this team up from the the draft and and free agency, and they did it the right way. Uh, I mean, they've been a winner for a minute. They've been in the playoffs off and on. Cal Shanahan with the the 49ers. Adam Peters was there before coming to Washington, and we saw how they built that team. He talked about, uh, you know, the building from the draft and getting free agencies, but basically building from the draft and taking their time with the process. You look at the Detroit Lions with some of their, and you talked about coaching. They've got two coaches that the Washington Commanders are looking at. So my, my thing is, Bringing in the right guy as far as the young-minded guy, and you talked about the older guy. I don't want no retreads, Tony. Sometimes those retreads just run run over you. And yeah, but they still in the Super Bowl, Donna. Tony, they don't move you nowhere. Andy Reeves is the only one in the Super Bowl that you can say that is the older coach. Harbaugh is still kind of like a little younger. But it's got to be, when they looked at their coaches across the board, as far as all of these teams in the playoffs, Tony, they looked at solid guys, and and like I said, beyond the head coaches, as Gary say, say that the the quarterback gets too much credit, whether they win and lose. Well, the head coach sometimes get that too, but it's the position coaches, Tony, to me that has to be right because you look at the position coaches with all of these teams in the playoffs, they are solid, Tony. They got solid defensive coordinators, and they got start start a solid offensive coordinator. So to me, that's where it starts at. If the commanders can look at the formula, Tony, and get it right, which I think they will this year, that's going to be the key. Well, and I tell no you what, Donna, you Tony, said two things. You, I don't know if it was an oxymoron or what, but you said you don't want retreads, but you just named the four best coaches in the playoffs and all of them are. Retreads. I don't know about that, Donna. We're going to have to check you. But here's what I'm going to ask these guys on the way back. Not only are you going to have to pick this week, I want y'all to pick the Super Bowl winner. And our, our, our reputation is on the line. Gary already the embarrassing. So when we come back, we'll take care of that little bit of business and tell you guys what to do. We'll be back in a moment. In the Minute with Tony and Donna. You can catch them weekly on their podcast. And you can also subscribe to their YouTube channel, In the Minute. Tony McGee's Pro Football Plus Speakers Bureau offers you various opportunities to connect with former and current players along with Tony and the crew. For more information, go to redmagplus.com Speakers Bureau. One more thing. 39 years. Not many shows can claim a streak like that, but Tony McGee's Pro Football Plus sure can. Tony McGee, a burgundy and gold legend on the field and for decades now on the air, is once again excited to bring his one-of-a-kind program to his legion of fans across the Mid-Atlantic. How to last so long? By always delivering unique, insightful, entertaining, and oh yeah, fun, lots of fun, week in and week out. Tony's cast includes the legendary Gary Clark, the impeccable Donna Hopkins on the Burgundy and Gold Beat for decades now, as well as icons from Washington football past and present, not to mention the Pro Football Hall of Famers who flocked to Tony's show year in and year out. There is not a show dedicated to football fans like this one, and the proof is in the almost four decades that Tony McGee's Pro Football Plus has been the go-to stop for fans who want content that only Tony and crew can deliver. This season promises to be yet another exciting one for the team, the league, the show, and its fans, and we want you to be a part of it. There are sponsorship opportunities to fit your business's goals, 30 and 60 second targeted commercial spots, weekly segments dedicated to promoting your brand, on-air guest opportunities for you to share your company's mission, and so on. We'd love to discuss tailoring a sponsorship program that is just right for you, both in scope and in cost. For sponsorship opportunities, call 703-282-0792 or email info at regnatplus.com. 
be a part of this historic season on this historic show. Tony McGee's Pro Football Plus. 39 years and the millions of viewers over those years can't be wrong. And, you know, we're going to end this real quick, and I want everybody to tell me we only got one minute. Who do you think will win the Super Bowl? Starting with you, Donna. Uh, Baltimore, Tony. Baltimore Ravens. Big Zo. The land of the crab cakes. Baltimore. Trey. Baltimore. G. Kansas City. Uh, I'm going to go Tony. with Chris, I'm going to go with Frisco. And fans, we want you to go with us. As we told you, we finished our 39th year, and we're very proud of that. We want your ideas for next year. We're going to go on the road. We're going to do a lot of things. But one thing about it, we know if it wasn't for a blessing and it wasn't for you fans, we'd never be here. So that's another reason we never say goodbye. Who won the picks, Tony? Who won the picks? Oh, I got to say that G-Man won it again. Now, I ain't going to say how many times he won. But you know, two out of twenty is pretty good. We gonna say I'm a, I'm a multiple winner. We're gonna say in a minute. 